the new summer banner leaked earlier in the day it kind of seemed like they uploaded it at 11 a.m instead of 11 p.m i don't know if that's actually what happened but if it is that's very funny hello spachaki nutty is right there's a lot going on here in this banner i was excited to talk about it so instead of waiting for them to officially upload it at, at 11 p.m uh I'm just going to watch this re-upload that someone did. I guess we'll watch the whole thing like normal? I don't know, this is this is weird. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll just come back later and analyze the skills and stuff. But yeah, we got Selena. This is her first time in the game. She's a boss from Sacred Stones. I'm no stranger to heat like this. My homeland's practically a desert after all. That's Joshua. He is also from the Sacred Stones. In case you didn't know. <laughs> Joshua finally got an alt. It took a very long time. Do people actually like loot, or is it ironic? <laughs> I find her kind of annoying. <laughs> anyway, she's the demo. I guess, there, I mean, yeah, there must be people that like her, ironically. I'm, I'm joking, but still. So, how do you like your swimsuit? Appropriate to this adventure. So this is where it gets weird. I am here with you. She is a bit too condescending. <laughs> but yeah, we have a duo. Or not really a duo. This is a new type of duo hero called like Twin Worlds Heroes or like Harmony Heroes. It's very weird. Also, they've they shrunk them. Look at them, they're so small. This is our second baby Marth in the game. Look at how small he is. But yeah, they have a new duo esque skill that grants this uh, new effect. I'll explain what it does later. Okay, and that's that. I will skip ahead here to show we have Riss as our Tempest Trials reward. I have saved Grails for far too long, and I will probably dump them into this boy, assuming he's not terrible. He probably won't be, like, great. He'll probably be pretty mediocre, but it looks like he'll have, like, decent H HP at least, so you can do, like, I don't know, infantry pulse with him. And he'll have a new generic staff too, which will probably be okay. Anyway, all right, let's, I guess we'll just start from the beginning. We'll save Mia for the end. Uh, I got Selena. She is green mage on a horse. And her artist is the one that does all the art for the FE7 characters, I guess. All right, she has a non-inheritable weapon, exotic fruit juice. <laughs> These weapon names. Grants attack plus three, inflicts speed, res minus six on foes within two spaces during combat. So it's straightforward, but pretty good. It's actually fairly tame compared to the other like perf seasonal weapons we've gotten recently. She does look good, I agree. I guess Ursula sold well last year, so they were like, all right, we'll just do Selena this year. Why not? Selena isn't even, like, in the game yet, so she deserves it, I think. I hope she gets, like, a Grand Hero battle later on uh, to get her other form or her other version in the game. So this is interesting. She comes with Drawback, which synergizes with these new skills called Snag Skills. This is now Pokemon Coliseum. If a movement assist skill is used by unit or target's unit, inflicts speed res minus 6 on nearest foes within four spaces of both unit and target through their next actions. So it's fairly straightforward, it's kind of like Mordecai's effect, where like, you can smite someone, and then once that unit lands, it inflicts like minus uh, debuffs on enemies that are near them. This is a little different, because it's within four spaces of them, which is pretty nutty. And does minus six to speed res. So the thing that's not clear is, does it apply the debuff before or after the unit moves? So like, for example, with Mordecai, like you smite, and then wherever that unit lands, the enemies around them get debuffed. But here, it doesn't actually clarify whether or not, uh, whether or not it works that way. So, usually I would just assume that it works that way, because that's just more intuitive, I think. 
Uh, but who knows? Maybe they would have actually clarified it if it worked that way. Either way, it should be pretty good. Basically the opposite of Link Skill. Yeah, wait, Link Skill, which one is that? Oh yeah, okay, yeah, Link Skills. I get Link Skills mixed up with, like, Faints and Ruses and everything else. <laughs> Generally speaking, I do like these types of skills, though, like the Ruses and stuff like that, just because they make AR offense more open-ended, like there's more room for actual strategy, and so when you can use, you know, like, attack speed Ruse properly to win, like, it's pretty satisfying. And she comes with attack speed push 4. This is like... It's like a new Swift Sparrow. All the new waifu, waifu, waifu units that have high attack and speed just get this now. I think Bernie got this too. So this is our only dude on the banner, as is tradition. Uh, interestingly, he's not our demote, which is good. I kind of wish they would just even out the genders on the banner, but whatever. What do I know? Uh, he's an infantry red bow. He's the only infantry unit on the banner. He's got an inheritable bow called Coral Bow. Fight up against flying units. Inflict speed defense minus 5 on foes within 2 spaces during combat. So I guess Selena does a, a speed and res. Yeah. I mean, that only makes sense with what she has, but yeah. So what's interesting about these skills is that they work... Well, I imagine they work like uh, Olwyn's perf weapon, where your allies can take advantage of this as well. So if you have Joshua within two spaces of an enemy, then if you have somebody else fight that enemy, then they'll still have that debuff on them, that passive debuff. So that's pretty cool. I guess these like link skills are a running theme on this banner, aren't they? With these movement skills, it's kind of interesting. So he comes with shove and attack speed link. I wonder when the last time was we got a unit with shove. I bet it's been a little while. Maybe like Valbar or Ross. Is our first unit with Fortify Defense 4, so that's a thing. <laughs> I mean, it's it's there, I guess. It's just another tier 4 C skill that you can put on units to maximize score. I'm sure it's like decently useful, but whatever. Don't have much to say about Joshua, he's very straightforward. I like his outfit, I like his dumb beach hat. <laughs> So yeah, you can see his base kit. I mean, even though he's not the 4-star focus, he's still pretty bad in terms of his base kit. I, I, hopefully his stats will at least be good to like offset that. Alright, anyway, we got loot. When are we going to get some boy butt art? You're right, it is overdue. Alright, loot is the 4-star focus, that's why her kit is kind of bad, but... Her inheritable tome uh, inflicts speed res minus 5 on foes within 2 spaces during combat, so it's the same effect that everybody else had. It's a pretty good generic weapon to have on a 4-star focus, actually, so that's good. It's probably one of the better, like, 4-star focus uh, weapons we've gotten, along with, like, Narcian and his lance from before. She has speed tactic, so that's more accessible now, I guess. Another unit with a positional skill. That's weird. They all have positional skills. I didn't even notice until now, but yeah. Uh, she's a flying blue mage. If there's one thing I don't like about these summer banners is that they just, like, spam... <laughs> They spam horses and flyers and... But yeah, if you want to merge up loot, she's probably pretty good. She's probably... Like, I imagine her stats will just be strictly better than Summer Corrin's. I've just come to accept that. <laughs> that these new units just have more stats. So you can merge her up and she'll be really good. You can just give her Blarblade. Or you can keep this. Whatever works. Okay, now... This is when things get confusing and interesting. We have not a duo unit, but some kind of resonant unit. Functionally, they're basically the same as a duo unit. So first, we'll just take a look at their stats. Okay, what's weird is they're like holding sword looking things. And they're like, they're sword ladies. They use swords. And here they are using swords, but like, freaking... Their dagger unit, which is just weird. I feel like they designed the arts, like, before they know what the weapon is. Or what the weapon type is. And then, like, whatever the weapon is, they just make it open-ended enough to where you can believe it is anything, you know? Like, Hinata's axe could have just as easily been, like, a sword, you know? Anyway. It's, it's a minor complaint. <laughs> also, minor complaint, once again, I don't like how they spam horses and flyers on these summer banners, but whatever. 
Uh, I really like Mia. Mia's cool. And they crossed her over with a character from a different game, which is which is new. People are, in general, I would say people are kind of down on this idea. And I can kind of get why, but I think people are being too hyperbolic about it, as usual. <laughs> number right, number right, you missed Joshua. Because, like, a lot of the complaints I saw were like, oh, well, now they can just combine characters willy-nilly and it doesn't matter. Like, people are super cynical about it, like, right off the bat, and I actually don't get why. Because, like, we're not even going to get that many of these. Like, even in the first place, we don't get that many duo units. Now, like, if we alternate duos and these resident heroes, like, we're going to get, like, three of these before the end of the year. <laughs> and I imagine for each of them, they're going to put a decent amount of thought into them so that they're at least, like... You know, loosely connected. I would say, I will say these two are loosely connected because of stuff that happened in, like, Tempest Trials, I guess. It's a cool idea, but yeah. I think it's cool. It allows for crossovers and interactions other games wouldn't allow. Yeah, exactly. Like, I actually think it's it's good. Like, one of the whole points of these crossover games, right, like, like Heroes, is that you can have characters interact with each other that wouldn't usually be able to do that. Yeah. Any pair of FE characters can become duo units now, exactly. You can have, like, I don't even know what a good example would be. Like, Hector and Ephraim? I bet that'll happen. <laughs> even though Hector and Ephraim are both in duels already. They both have the word Blade in their title thing? Oh, is that true? Hence the Blades thing in their harmony skill. Interesting. Once again, I'll, I'll lose connection, but I see where you're coming from, yeah. But yeah, I think you're right. Like, people are are too cynical about this. Like, I don't think they're going to pair up characters like willy-nilly. They're at least going to try and make interesting duos. Like, why wouldn't they? I don't know. People are weird. People had a knee-jerk reaction to this for a couple of reasons. Also, people... Okay, so this one I kind of get. So, like, why is it Marth and not Lucina? Like, I get it's probably because of the conversations they had in Tempest Trials, but even still, like, if she's wearing a swimsuit, she's she's clearly not Marth. So clearly not Ashy Marth. Maybe they just don't care anymore. Everybody in Faye knows it's, it's Lucina anyway. Yeah, I like that Mia always wears orange. I guess they just think that orange is really integral to her, like, color scheme. Yeah, people would have reacted better if it was Lucina. You're right. But then that would break the lore in Tempest Trials. <laughs> My Tempest Trials lore, no. In general, I'm... I'm positive about this. <laughs> Bruno and Xander. Yo, that would actually be sick. <laughs> Christmas Bruno and Xander. Uh, so yeah, like, in the first place, I was already waiting for, like, a duo Tellius unit to dump my orbs into, and, like, if this came out before Micaiah, like, I probably would have gone through the same thing, where I would have been like, oh, okay, I'll just dump my 1,000 orbs into this, and just get as many merges as possible, but, like... Now I'm in a weird spot. <laughs> if you haven't been following the lore uh, of my orbs, basically, uh, when Bridal Micaiah came out, I was like, okay, this is it. I'm going to dump all my orbs into this and hope for the best. Uh, but I sat on it for like two weeks, and eventually I decided not to. So I spent like 400 orbs instead. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to summon for Resident Mia and Marth, I guess, on Thursday. Hopefully it won't take that many orbs. I, I, I only want one copy, I'm pretty sure. So, there's that. Also, okay, so one last thing. <laughs> so remember how I said that Bridal Micaiah has to rerun eventually on, like, a double seasonal banner or something? Like, there's no way they're gonna run her with Mia and Marth, right? Like, that'd be crazy. Because on the double seasonal banners, they run two of each color. So... Yeah, Micaiah's in a weird spot. I don't know who they're going to run her with. Hellbini, yeah, Hellbini and Ilgur would also be good. They probably they, they probably would have done that last year if they had duos back then, you know what I mean? Duos or resonance, whatever they're called. Okay, I'm sorry I, I uh, meandered here. Okay, <sighs> deep breaths. Their perf weapon is Summer Strikers. Accelerate special trigger if unit's HP greater than 25% instead of combat, and unit initiates combat. 
Grants attack speed plus 5 during combat and reduces damage from foe's first attack by 75%. This effect is very strong. It's similar to Kagero's dart, but then... I don't know what all is on Kagero's dart, but I imagine this is probably even easier to activate with like the 25% HP threshold, and I don't know if Kagero's dart has the special trigger acceleration on it, but yeah. This weapon's really good. You can basically initiate on whatever you want and survive. Because even now, I don't think we have skills that negate, uh, that negate damage reduction. Yeah, exactly. And when she initiates, she activates with Sparrow 3. Yeah, she's uh, going to be ridiculously strong. Maybe we'll actually see this unit in Arena and stuff. Like last year, they released Summer uh, Gunthra, who was the same weapon type and everything, and like nobody pulled for her. <laughs> I never saw her in Arena or Aether Rays or anything. She has a new, or not a new, a re repositional skill. She has reposition. And she has another snag skill, speed defense snag. I had explained what this did earlier, but this one specifically does speed and defense. Why even add the HP threshold? Yeah, honestly, that's a good point. <laughs> like, it's so easy to activate, it may as well be zero. Like, you would think they would at least make it so that it, like, inflicts damage on her after each combat, kind of like attack speed push. But yeah, I guess she's supposed to be like a almost like a support unit in AR offense or defense. Because if you use her in AR defense, then she can run up, attack, and be like a Wings of Mercy beacon. And yeah, we can see her stats too, that's right. Uh, I guess we can move on to that. Do it! There! Okay. It wasn't nearly as fast that time as usual. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I think that leaves her with 35 base attack, right? Which is pretty good for what she is. Like, speed-oriented horse dagger. Usually they have less attack, but Mia has 35 at base. 41 base speed, because I don't think her perf weapon adds any speed, so I think she just straight up has 41 speed. She'll probably have a super boon too, so that's the thing. And she has low defense, and... I guess average res. The thing is, like, even though her defense is low, she's still gonna live, like, everything as long as she's initiating, because she has the damage reduction, so. Alright, well, we can move on to... Yeah, her BST should be around there, yeah. Which is just funny, because, like, I think her BST is, like, 156 or 158. That's 10 higher than infantry daggers for, at, at launch. <laughs> Like, I know I'm very slow on, like, oh, power creeps ruining everything, but, yeah. Okay. So this isn't a duo skill, it's, an, it's a harmonized skill. Grants resonance blades to unit and allies from the same titles as unit. I start of every third turn, and yeah, you can refresh it this way. This is a little confusing, because, like, we already have a duo unit that has this added effect on it, but whatever. I'm get. I'm guessing that all harmonized skills are, are, are going to have this added effect that lets you redo it. They have Resonance Blade, it just grants a new affliction called Blades, I guess? Which, oh, it's specifically Resonance Blades, that grants attack speed plus 4 during combat for one turn. Which is pretty tame, but I like it. <laughs> like I said, she's kind of a good support unit in AR offense as well, so you can just kind of do that. You can see it activates on Legendary Ike and Chrome. So the question is whether or not it will activate on Path of Radiance characters, and I suspect that it actually will. I think it would be weird if it didn't. So that's that's my guess. Uh, I know the game does differentiate between Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn with like the icons for Ike and Micaiah, but still. There's a chance that it won't affect Path of Radiance characters, but for now I'm guessing it will. I think that's everything. There's so much shit going on here. <laughs> oh yeah, freaking they... Okay, well first of all, with Mia, uh, she has a new... Or no, it's the same artist, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad they keep Mia's artist uh, consistent. I like when they keep things consistent like that for some characters. Uh, but... They changed her voice actor. Her voice actor used to be Lenny Manelli. Manella? I don't know. Manelli. 
and they changed it to this new lady, who I'm sure is fine, but like, what gives? And I just saw a tweet from Lanny Manelli. Apparently, she didn't even know that Mia was being recasted, so that's just a bummer. They didn't even contact her. They were probably just like, all right, we gotta... We gotta sell this new Harmony unit, whatever it's called. We gotta make the big bucks, because it's summertime. And they want to make sure the voice actor is not divisive, because I know a lot of people didn't like Mia's voice actor. Which is a shame. But yeah. So I'm just saying, I'm pretty sure I called Sacred Stone Summer. Did I not? I think I suggested it. Like, I didn't do it as a hard read, but still. It was like one of two things I suggested. Yeah, I suggested Sacred Stones and Three Houses, I think. So I mean, I'm just saying, I was basically right. <laughs> I know the theme is actually more like... Uh, Farfetch'd Heroes, right? Because in the first year of the game, we got the Farfetch'd Heroes banner that had, like, Mia and Joshua and Loot and Dorcas. So I guess it's more themed around that, but still. I'm taking the W, because Selena's here too. Also, I think they'll put Dorcas in the second summer banner, personally. He might be, like, the only FE7 character in there, but yeah. I bet they'll put Dorcas in the second summer banner. <laughs> Look at Joshua hidden behind all that cleavage. <laughs> I will say, so since Reese, Riss, Reese, Riss is being added anyway, I actually would have preferred duo uh, Mia and Riss. I meant to edit together the summoning stream, but I forgot. <laughs> or I just didn't get around to it more like, so later this week I will get around to editing the summoning stream, and I'll upload that. Otherwise, uh, if you're watching on Twitch, uh, go subscribe on YouTube. I upload abridged versions of these reaction streams on there. And if you're watching on YouTube, then go follow on Twitch, because we always do live reactions to these when they're not leaked beforehand. And that's it. <laughs>